Welcome back to Monitors Unboxed. Today, it's time to test a product that I've been trying to get my hands on for some time now, the BenQ Zowie XL2566K. I spent a lot of time over the last six months looking at some of the fastest monitors on the market, whether that's new 240Hz OLEDs or the 1440p 360Hz IPS LCD that debuted last year. But none are supposed to be as fast as this class-leading eSports monitor from BenQ, so it'll be very interesting to compare the best OLEDs and LCDs that I've tested previously with the XL2566K. BenQ have optimized this product for one thing above all else, and that speed. What we're looking at is a 24.5-inch 1080p 360Hz gaming monitor using TN LCD technology. That's right, TN tech, not IPS or VA. Some people have called TN a dead technology, while panel manufacturers and display OEMs like BenQ insist it's still the fastest available and optimal for hardcore competitive multiplayer gaming. The combination of 360Hz and TN LCD should deliver supreme motion clarity. Enhancing that package is the use of BenQ's Diac Plus backlight strobing technology, which is among the best tuned blur reduction techniques on the market. The idea here being that a combination of a super fast 360Hz TN panel with elite backlight strobing should deliver unmatched motion performance, something I'll be testing today ahead of looking at 500Hz monitors hopefully quite shortly. As a product that's designed almost exclusively for competitive esports gamers, the XL2566K is a classic example of function over form. This is not a particularly attractive monitor with thick bezels on the front and a relatively low resolution, but this is designed specifically for competitive play. A lower screen resolution is easier to run at high frame rates natively in today's esports games, and thicker bezels allow for fewer distractions and reduced reflections, especially when paired with the included glare reducing side panels. The stand does come with a high range of ergonomic flexibility, including height, tilt, swivel, and pivot support. The base of the stand is also quite small, allowing for many different keyboard and mouse positions, yet despite this, it's quite a sturdy package. You won't be blown away by the build quality, which is mostly a standard plastic across all outer surfaces, but there are some handy additions like the foldable headphone stand on the rear and the easy carrying handle. There's an OK range of connectivity here, including one display port and two HDMI ports, but unfortunately the HDMI ports are just 2.0 spec instead of 2.1, meaning they are limited to 240Hz. This leaves only the display port 1.4 connector as fully capable of 360Hz input, which is a bit disappointing for those wanting to hook this up to multiple PCs. The on-screen display is controllable through a directional toggle, and it was quite interesting to see what sort of features are included. Of course, Diac Plus is key here, but aside from that, there aren't a lot of other gaming features. The black equalizer probably counts, but there's no crosshairs or FPS counters that we're seeing across a lot of other gaming monitors. I actually don't mind this, especially on a professional style gaming monitor like this. You probably don't want to give access to a cheat feature like crosshairs in a tournament setting where every player is using this monitor. But it does highlight the differences between casual competitive multiplayer monitors and something designed specifically for esports pros. The big talking point here is of course motion performance, so let's get into that now. In terms of response time performance and overdrive settings, the XL2566K includes three built-in presets, plus an adjustable slider for full user customization of overdrive. Love seeing that sort of feature, although ultimately it's not essential as the included modes are quite good. The off mode being the only mode I probably wouldn't recommend buyers use, except maybe for low refresh rate gaming. The big question mark is whether you should choose the high mode or the premium mode outside of user customization. The high mode is the better mode across the refresh rate range. While it's not the absolute fastest at 360Hz, it still offers great speed with the 3.96ms greater gray average and little to no overshoot. However, refresh compliance is on the lower side for a 360Hz monitor with a refresh window of just 2.78ms. But when we check across the refresh rate range, the high mode really is an excellent choice, maintaining performance in the 3-4ms range right down to 60Hz with acceptable levels of overshoot. This gives us a single overdrive mode experience as well as elite speed, and it ends up very well optimized, especially below 240Hz. For gamers that must have the absolute fastest performance and will largely be playing at the monitor's maximum refresh rate, this is where the premium mode is most suited. It drops the greater gray average to 2.82 milliseconds and does so without substantially increasing overshoot, although there is an increase to overshoot relative to the high mode. 
Cumulative deviation in this configuration is excellent for an LCD. However, when we get to 240 Hz and especially below 200 Hz, there is a high level of overshoot. So this mode, as I said, is best optimized for the highest refresh rates. If you know you'll be playing at a locked 360 FPS all of the time, or a higher frame rate than that using the 360 Hz configuration, the premium mode makes sense. For everyone else, the high mode is best. User customization can lead to a small increase in performance, but in my opinion, it's not worth it because the high mode works just fine. This immediately gives the XL2566K an advantage over its LCD competitors, such as the premium ASUS ROG Swift PG27AQN that delivers a 1440p 360Hz experience. The ASUS model doesn't really deliver a single overdrive mode experience, being primarily optimized for the highest refresh rates. The XL2566K is better optimized across a larger range of refreshes, which is probably due to the use of TNLCD technology instead of IPS. How the XL2566K compares to other monitors is quite interesting. At the maximum refresh rate using the best overdrive setting, this BenQ is right up there as one of the fastest LCDs that I've tested, but it isn't the outright fastest. The PG27AQN has a faster grade to grade average, but does so at a higher level of overshoot. The same can be said of the Samsung Neo G8, which is a 240Hz VA panel. The XL2566K does have superior cumulative deviation than the Neo G8, comparing fastest to fastest, but the balance of speed and overshoot is quite similar to the PG27AQN, making it hard to award a winner here between the two 360Hz options. It does show that the ASUS model using IPS technology is able to match this TN monitor in speed under these conditions, which is pretty impressive given the drawbacks of IPS for performance versus TN typically. However, this BenQ monitor is not really in the ballpark of OLEDs. It does deliver impressive speed for an LCD at 360Hz, but it kind of gets trounced by the two OLED panel types that I've tested. This isn't the entire contest, of course, as the XL2566K supports backlight strobing, where the OLEDs do not, but it does show that there is a way to go for even a TN LCD to catch up to where OLEDs sit today. Looking at average performance is a different story though. Across the entire refresh rate range, the XL2566K has notably different performance than the PG27AQN. It's about one millisecond slower on average, but achieves this with a much lower inverse ghosting rate, meaning the BenQ monitor achieves this speed with fewer artifacts than its competitors. The ASUS 360Hz option is really pushed to its limits, whereas the BenQ is sitting with a more balanced approach to motion clarity. And this plays out looking at cumulative deviation. The XL2566K on average is the best LCD I've ever tested in this metric, showing that perfect balance between speed and overshoot that is only possible with a TN LCD at this point. A result of 344 is 22% better than the PG27AQN with its IPS panel and Odyssey G7 with its VA panel, while also coming in 18% ahead of the HP Omen X27, another fast TN monitor. This isn't an earth-shattering margin, I typically find it quite hard to spot a 20% difference in real life, but at most refresh rates I do think the XL2566K is a little clearer than its LCD competition without the use of strobing. However, as is expected, OLEDs are still in the lead here, typically offering over five times the performance. There isn't an OLED that offers the wide range of refresh rates that the XL2566K offers yet. However, the additional speed of an OLED allows it to perform like a higher refresh rate LCD from a lower refresh rate, and we'll see that shortly. The XL2566K is geared towards 360Hz gaming, but it's also excellent for lower refresh rates like 120Hz. The speed on offer here is great with few artifacts unmatched by other LCDs. At 60Hz, the BenQ is still great, but not as strong as other refresh rates, though I don't imagine too many people will actually be gaming at 60Hz on this thing. It's certainly not a reason to buy it. Input lag was good, although the processing delay was a little higher than I was expecting at 2.5 milliseconds. I tested a variety of configurations, including adaptive sync enabled and disabled, and didn't see performance much better than 2.5 milliseconds of processing lag. Nevertheless, this is still a reasonably good result that leads to a responsive experience, and it's not something I'd overly worry about. Power consumption is great, not the most efficient monitor I've ever seen, but it's in the top half of contenders with just 24 watts of power usage after calibration. The big selling point to the XL2566K is DIAC+. Plus. If you're not interested in backlight strobing, this probably isn't the monitor for you because it's clearly designed to be used with it enabled. In fact, it even comes with DIAC enabled by default. 
Like other backlight strobing modes, the goal here is to switch the backlight on and off between refresh cycles, reducing persistence blur and improving motion clarity. This makes this display much more competitive with other products in motion clarity, typically offering the best experience you can get. Here's an example using the Blurbusters UFO test. With Diac Plus disabled, and compared to other monitors at 360Hz, there isn't much in it between the XL2566K and PG27AQN at 360Hz. They both look very similar. This shouldn't be a surprise as the response testing data shows they are very similar, but the UFO test is a more visual representation of the results. The 27GI95QE with its 240Hz OLED is also competitive, though not quite as good, with its much faster response times compensating somewhat for the lower refresh rate. Ultimately, without strobing enabled, it's difficult to pick a winner, especially between the 360Hz LCDs. But enable Diac Plus, and it's a definitive victory in favour of BenQ. The PG27AQN doesn't support backlight strobing, and neither do any of the 240Hz OLEDs I've tested, which gives the XL2566K a large advantage in motion clarity. Diac Plus on the premium setting is extremely impressive, the clearest image I've ever seen from this sort of mode, with little to no strobe crosstalk, and a perfectly timed strobe that puts the clearest image in the centre of the screen. There is a bit more interference at the top and bottom of the screen, but it's still by far good enough to use over the standard non-strobed mode. There are two other advantages to Diac Plus. One is that you get this level of strobing at other refresh rates, give or take. So gaming with strobing at 240Hz, 144Hz or even 100Hz is viable, with only a minor reduction in quality. 60Hz though doesn't work very well, the realistic floor is around 100Hz. The second advantage is that the clearest Diac Plus Premium mode is fully usable without sacrificing a ton of brightness. Some of these modes on other monitors have locked brightness or are just super dim, but not on this monitor, where the best strobed image is still achievable with brightness around 330 nits. This makes strobing far more usable than on many of its competitors. Diac Plus is designed for esports gaming though, so there are a few limitations. The biggest one is that it's not usable in conjunction with Adaptive Sync, something that other brands do offer, like Gigabyte for example, typically with worse image quality and motion clarity. This means Diac only works at fixed refresh rates and therefore requires a fixed in-game frame rate for the best results. For example, if you wanted to use strobing at 360Hz, you'd have to ensure your hardware is powerful enough to run the game at 360fps, which is much more achievable in a game like Valorant than it is in Call of Duty. If 360fps isn't achievable, you have to lower the refresh rate of the display and lock the game to that refresh rate, which at least looks pretty good, but Diac Plus it doesn't give you that dynamic frame rate capability when enabled. This is really a non-issue for professional gamers and pro esports players who are used to high frame rate, low setting gaming and dealing with things like fixed refresh rates and frame caps. But don't expect this to play nicely with excellent motion clarity for single player games. It really isn't designed for this and you'd probably be better off with an OLED instead. Let's talk about color quality now, which on an eSports monitor is probably a low priority, but still worth talking about. Basically, this is not a super impressive monitor for colors. It's not wide gamut, it only covers around 98% of the sRGB color space, so don't expect huge levels of saturation or any HDR capabilities, which is not supported at all. Out of the box, the monitor is configured in the FPS1 mode, which BenQ specifically says is optimal for CSGO gaming. As you might imagine, a mode that's designed to make enemies the most visible in CSGO will not be particularly color accurate, so this mode does not look very good in standard desktop apps. But if you flick it over to the standard mode, performance is reasonable. It has okay grayscale performance and saturation is looking pretty good, all things considered. It's not going to blow you away with accuracy, but this mode is perfectly usable for desktop apps outside of your gaming sessions. Further performance advantages can be achieved through a full calibration, and actually this is quite an easy monitor to calibrate with great results at the end. I don't expect pro gamers will want to go through this process, as messing around with the contrast and colour settings is probably the best way to game and get a competitive advantage, though it is nice to confirm that accuracy is possible, even on a monitor like this. Maximum brightness is average at 353 nits peak, although as I mentioned earlier, it's great to see strobe brightness is also very high at 330 nits. You can also run this display at 42 nits if you really want to, although I don't think this would be the best configuration for pro gaming. 
The native contrast ratio of this panel is actually pretty decent and improves a fair bit after calibration compared to its out of the box performance. I recorded a ratio of 1091 to 1, which yeah, isn't the best relative to VR LCDs or OLEDs, but is very serviceable for a TN LCD, which typically sit below 1000 to 1. This level of contrast is in line with IPS LCDs, which is a good result. Unfortunately, one of the biggest weaknesses here is viewing angles, which are terrible like many TN LCDs. You really have to be looking at this display dead on to get the best experience. Tilting the monitor even a few degrees will start to cause washing out and color degradation. This is no different to other TNs that I've tested, but you kind of forget how bad the experience is when most LCDs these days don't use TN technology anymore. Needless to say, this is a compromise to achieve the speed and other functionality for competitive gamers. Uniformity was okay, though there was some fall off around the edges of the panel. The final section of this review is the Hub Essentials checklist, which is a great result for BenQ. One of the only deductions I made was the lack of HDMI 2.1 to support the full 360Hz over HDMI. The rest of the results are largely great, with BenQ making some clever advertising choices. For example, response time performance is not advertised at all, so consumers won't be fooled into thinking the monitor is faster than it really is. I was also impressed enough with the strobing quality to give this a borderline result. Another smart decision was to not advertise or include HDR functionality, as this display is obviously not capable of HDR. While not the newest product on the market at this point, it was nevertheless very interesting to check out and benchmark the BenQ Zowie XL2566K and compare it to some of the fastest monitors I've tested previously, specifically the 1440p 360Hz IPS from ASUS and the range of 240Hz OLEDs I've been talking about a lot lately. While this BenQ monitor is clearly quite a niche product, it sets out to deliver the best possible motion clarity and I think it succeeds quite well at that goal, even when compared to other leading technologies. What was particularly interesting to find is that at 360Hz, the XL2566K isn't faster in response times than the PG27AQN and obviously loses to OLEDs quite badly in this metric. But thanks to the excellent motion clarity offered by the DIAC Plus backlight strobing mode, it quite easily takes the lead in overall motion clarity. This is the clearest monitor I've ever used. I've seen tons of very unimpressive strobing modes over the years, but the combination here of a TN LCD, 360Hz refresh rate, and BenQ's great tuning ends up delivering an experience that you just can't achieve on other monitors, especially those without strobing modes. And it highlights the need for this sort of feature in products like the PG27 AQN and the latest OLEDs, even if not everyone would use it. For serious, hardcore competitive gamers, it's hard to think of a better product than this. Pro gamers don't need the best colors or the best viewing angles, but they do need something that's fast and allows them to easily see enemies. That's exactly what the XL2566K provides, better than any other monitor I've tested. But it does have a reasonably narrow focus on delivering the features an eSports gamer would want. I think OLEDs and even the PG27AQN are much more versatile gaming monitors, so unless you fall into the niche where this display makes sense, it is hard to recommend. In the quest to produce the clearest gaming monitor, some compromises have been made along the way. It has terrible viewing angles, lackluster color performance, an average at best contrast ratio, and the 1080p resolution is not going to excite everyone. It's also very expensive at $600 US, so like I said, this is very much a niche product. I don't imagine there will be too many non-esports gamers after a $600 1080p monitor these days, but at the same time, for its target audience, $600 isn't a ridiculous price. You're paying for the best motion clarity and getting it, so from that perspective, I don't think it's overpriced, especially as other super fast monitors I've compared it to throughout this review are priced at like $1,000 or more. What I'd really like to see and hope is possible in the future is a monitor that combines the strengths of the XL2566K with other monitors. Imagine something like this with the excellent strobing of DIAC Plus that works in conjunction with variable refresh rates at a higher resolution and perhaps even an OLED screen. Is that the future of competitive gaming monitors? Well, hopefully the industry can work its way towards something like that over the coming years. Anyway, that's it for this review. If you do appreciate our monitor coverage, then please do subscribe to the channel. Really appreciate everyone that does that. It's a nice, easy, free way to support the channel. And if you do want to support us directly and the testing that we do, we have our Patreon and Floatplane accounts in the description below. When you do sign up there, you'll gain access to some benefits like access to our Discord community. We do have ICC profiles available for all the monitors we test, and you will be supporting us to buy monitors and do other cool stuff on this channel. So thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.